Hi Scott, we're here at the Omnetic stand at Electronica 2022. Um, we're here to talk a little bit more about um, connectors, but your style of connectors that you bring to the market are a little bit different to the consumer connectors that we're used to. What's the background of Omnetics? So, uh, we've been in business for over 30 years. Uh, we focus on what's referred to as the micro and the nano size. Um, and there's they're built around a couple mil specs, which are you know, military standards. So you are intermatable, so there's competition in the marketplace. So we have 83513, which is the Micro D, and then 32139, which is the Nano D. Now those are two D shapes, so it's taking the size of your D sub connector, which a lot of people are familiar with from the back of their computer, and bringing it smaller, lighter, more dense. Um, so we, you know, our thing is for high shock, vibration, harsh environments. That's It's got to operate in those environments. It's got to be reliable and withstand all the stresses of that. So that's kind of our little claim to fame. You know, we make strip connectors and circular connectors with the same kind of um, materials and things and do test it to the same shock, vibration, G-forces that we do the D-subs that have a specification written for it. Now, Omnetics is based in Minneapolis, but how did the business actually get started in, in connectors? Uh, Omnetics, Omnetics was spun out of another company that had a customer, Cray Supercomputers, came to that company and said, I need a different, a different, a better mousetrap. I need a different connector. So the engineer with that company, Roger, had developed this connector, showed it to Cray, Seymour Cray. He was like, that'll work. And then started building connectors for Cray supercomputers. And then after that kind of branched out, uh, the military was creating some specifications for smaller connectors. Omnetics got involved in that and was part of the whole process with about eight to 10 other companies and kind of developing specifications for smaller, more reliability. And then as the supercomputer went, we went another way, they went <laughs> top selected. Now we got quantum computing, so we do have a chance again. A chance to get back <laughs> into the computer business. Yes, so actually there is some kind of the size we've got, there is interest from the quantum computing guys, so it's like almost a full circle. <laughs> so how big is the team in, in Minneapolis, and is that your only location for manufacturing, or do you work we, with other partners? We, we have two locations in Minneapolis. We have a, a machine shop that we have a lot of, uh, you know, that we can machine a lot of our own housings and parts, and then we have our manufacturing facility, so two locations, both in Minneapolis. And then we do have outside partners that help, you know, fill in and provide services for us, you know, for some of that. We, we use outside sources for plating. We have, use an outside source for stamping for the injection molding of our insulators. So, but everything else we probably do inside, in-house. Now, in the past, when I've had ever had the opportunity to work on a, a military grade or a high re reliability application, that the connectors were big, bulky, and, and uh, yeah. robust, um, but looking at the, your stand, I mean, I, I've never seen connectors so small, to yes. be honest, so um, <laughs> what's driving the miniaturization, um, and how do you then maintain the reliability at these uh, dimensions? Well, so the, you know, precision machining makes the reliability a lot easier, um, but realistically, when you're looking at the military applications, there is still a lot of those big connectors because um, change comes slowly and big. Uh, that's what I've always done. I know it's, uh, but really what's driving it is more electronics. You have weight budgets, you know, you have size budgets. So with all these sensors you can add and all this great technology you can add, you add that and you go, whoa, we got a lot of weight here. Where, where do we start cutting? Well, if you make the wire smaller, the connector smaller, you reduce a lot of weight. Because the bigger the connector, the bigger the wire. You know, so, but also that the consumer market is driven to smaller connectors. So there is the cabling and the wiring and all that stuff that helps drive, because 
the high reliability applications are moving from analog. They're going to digital like our consumer life. So, you know, those kind of components are out there, but they still need that reliability for harsh environments and things like that. You know, because if your connector fails, you know, tonight, your phone won't charge. Tomorrow you go to the electronics store, you buy a new charging cord, and you're good to go. High reliability applications, not necessarily an option. It's exactly. like a bit difficult to change a cable in space, isn't yes. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's some people that want to try that. You know, they're developing a fueling station in space to refuel these small stuff. <laughs> So when it comes to the connectors, typically we, we, we have the pins, we have the, the wires themselves, and mm -hmm. then we have the housing that goes yeah. ar around that. I mean, um, what are the challenges around making that at miniature and nano scale and uh, making it reliable and, and building it and putting the assembly together? Uh, well, I mean, it, it, it's like everything, right? If you have, the challenge is, less so because you've developed a process that's repeatable, reliable, you've tested it out, you've proven it. Um, you know, it's where it gets more challenging is the higher speed digital and you're trying to put multiple sing signals together is making sure you have that shielding inside to the final point as close as you can possibly have it. Because, you know, as digital signals, you know, digital signals are more sensitive to noise and disruption than analog signals. And there's the whole timing issue of when the signal leaves and has to arrive. So, you know, being being able to, you know, maintain that signal and integrity is what really is driving the biggest challenges in the nano and small. It's not that you can't do it, it's just being able to get everything, the shielding as close as possible to that open you know, where you're in the pin or socket, because that's an open, you know. Yeah. So um, military and defense and also um, aerospace and satellite space yeah. applications have often driven high reliability yeah. because they're things where nothing can go wrong. Right. But we're in increasingly seeing applications in, in medical which are getting quite complicated beyond just um, testing and, and um, examining patients. We're yeah. looking at cochlear implants and things like that. Yeah. What's going on there? So, you know, uh, if you look at a lot of medical, there, there's two challenges, right? So medical, um, a lot of the applications, they don't want to go smaller connectors just because whether it's a, a nurse, a doctor, you know, somebody has is gloved, has to handle that. It might be in an operating room. It might be at bedside, you know, things like that, and you're moving fast. So smaller connectors are harder to work with, plus they have the room. Yep. You know, to use it. Now you're looking at cochlear. Um, they're trying to drive reliability and size as small as possible because these are body worn. They're external, um, and you're you know if you're running a cable, you, you'd always like more signals, but you want to keep it as small as possible. And then when you're looking at the the cabling that goes around that, you you have very fine gauge wire and you. <clears throat> cochlear started with little kids so you have kids that might want to tug on this stuff so it's got to pass like the child tug so child there's test. like um, <laughs> you know so you put things like Kevlar strength members in the cabling and all that but you know it, it's the real world lab that always tests it and you know says you can do better right yeah <laughs> now I can't begin to think how many D sub uh, connectors I've hand soldered together, yeah. but looking at some of the uh, connectors here, they're so tiny, so small, I couldn't even imagine starting. So beyond connectors, have you also got um, cabling uh, assemblies and, and finished cables that people can uh, purchase from Omnetics? Yeah, and we, we do, and but that's going to be more to your requirement. So there's not like, it, it's not like when you go on, you go to the electronics store and go, um, my TV is, you know, six meters away from my uh, device that's got to get the signal to it. So I got to go to the store and buy an eight meter cable. Um, no, it, you know, the cabling is going to be to an application. What is end to end? What is the length you need? You know, what does the pinout look like for you? Because most of uh, what we're doing is going to be 
I call them modified standards, right? They're going to stay within the insulator families we have, and it's just you're going to change the pinout. You know, is red one or is red three? You know, to match your application you're in. So that'll be that. Wire harnesses, we'll do those for customers. And the only thing we ask is we're on one end of a wire harness because a wire harness can have five or six different connectors. So, you know, we'll build it that way. But the driving force is always when you have, whether it's two different connectors on the end of a cable or a wire harness, the smallest connector in the chain dictates the size of the wire. Because <laughs> a nano will not support a 22 gauge wire. <laughs> I can imagine. So Scott, thank you ever so much for guiding us through the world of high reliability connectors. We wish you all the success at the show thank you. at Electronic 22 and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to catch up again soon. I look forward to it. Thank you very much.